good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to another edition of uh, Martin Lynch and Sons, something for the weekend. Today, uh, I'm not in Staines, as you can probably say, unless all of a sudden we appear to be on the coast. We're in uh, the little island of the Isle of Wight, which is um, off the south coast of the UK. Check it out if you've never been. Fantastic place. Over here visiting some customers, delivering some equipment to them, uh, and also collecting some trade-ins that you'll appear, see appear on our used website uh, next week. Time to get back and get checked in workshop, cleaned up and tested. They'll be on for sale. Um, today, a uh, Halloween special. We'll shortly be going over to the showroom, which is probably a lot warmer and less rainy than it is here, uh, where my sales manager, Tony, uh, has got a very Halloween special on the ICOM IC705 um, with a bundle deal on the LC192 and some other bits. Check that out. We have Gary, of course, going over. He's my customer services manager, for those of you who know Gary. Uh, he's been with me for years. and He deals with all your problems. This a week, though, he's going over our SDA, SDR range, software defined, defined radio, which goes on forever because we keep adding to it. So check that out. We've even got uh, Mark G1DX going over the excellent JVC Kenwood TS590, uh, one of my favourite HF. Goodness me, it's windy and rainy here. Who's my idea with this? Um, going over the JVC Kenwood. TS590 SG, um, 6 metre HF base station, one of my favourites and certainly one of Peter Hart's, we reviewed it uh, a few years ago. Look at that coastline, isn't that lovely? I'll tell you what's a lot better here when it's sunny. Um, one of my customers ring me up and tell them to come and see him when uh, it's nice weather because really, this time of year, it's almost November. Uh, we have uh, John Power going over uh, the 80, and it's also very windy. Going over the Initone AT778 uh, dual band 277 mobile for 19.995. That's a price. And um, what else have we got? We've got all sorts of things. So check it out. I'm going to put you over to Tony now before I get blown away. Look at this coast. Isn't it lovely? And there's a the little village in Ventnor. That's where we are. I'm sure the locals know where uh, this coastline is. That's it for now. Keep safe. Over to Tony in the uh, showroom. Over to you. Uh, yes, this weekend, as it's Halloween weekend, we've got a special deal going on the IC705, which I'm sure you're all aware is probably, well, catching up as to be one of the most popular radios that we're selling the last few months. Uh, we do have stock ready to ship. Obviously, you can pop into the store if need be, if you want to collect and you know go straight out and do some SOTA. That's not a problem. So anyway, as usual, we've got the 705. And for those that don't know, or are a little bit late to the party, HF, 6 metres, 2 metres, 70 sems, 5 watts on the battery, 10 watts with a DC power supply. And that gives you D-Star as well. It's multi-mode as well, so, you know, ideal for going up in the hills. And speaking of which, here's where the deal comes in. Not only do we still have the free items from Icon, so the hats, and a torch and thank you to our customer who uh, notified us about the lantern style as well pretty handy for halloween actually if you want to do the old uh, ooh. <laughs> so we still have some of those freebies available which will come with the radio um so special deal is going to be if you buy the 705 and the lovely lc192 backpack and um, if we take a closer look at it i don't know if you can zoom in a little bit henry so, all nicely branded here for ICOM. And then when you open it up, it's actually braced on the inside. So the 705 obviously sits in here. We've got a small opening here. As you can see, we've done this, obviously this doesn't come with the, the rucksack, but just to give you an example, we've mounted a Nagoya dual band 2 and 70 antenna onto there, which are available from stock as well. And fed it through here to a little BNC connection. And we're just using one of the diamond or you could use a Nagoya mount, put onto the side here. So as I said, it's really nicely braced. So very, very sturdy rucksack. And we've got the webbing on the back as well. I'll just turn that round. Hopefully you can see that there. 
and a little holder here as well if you want to pop your pen in if you're making a uh, paper log and again here pop your water bottle in there maybe especially if you're doing long overs always needed and then we've got the opening on the front so there we go and again that's into compartments so if you're running the uh, matte tuner for example matte 705 tuner which we have down here you can just pop that into there and an external battery source as well if need be or keep your coax in there if you're going to pop a wire up so anyway as i was saying if you order these two together so the 705 let's pop that to one side because i know what's going to happen if you order the radio the lc192 together we will be giving you a 25 pounds gift voucher as well for free of charge so that goes for orders placed on the website uh, in store or over the phone over the weekend so i'll be in this saturday so by all means give me a call if you want to place an order now 25 pounds what can you get for 25 pounds so if you look down this way henry you'll see the mydell stand which will basically be free of charge if you use your MLS gift voucher. Also, we have the Prism 705 cover. So these are being produced for us at the moment. And that will cost you less than three pounds if you use your voucher with it. So, I mean, these are great. So um, if you've already got your accessories um, and you may be thinking, well, what else can I get? You know, you can get the 705 power supply brought onto the market by Martin himself. And they're selling really well. So they're 40 pounds, so obviously 25 pounds off of that, less than 15 pounds will get you the power supply. Now, if you've got all of those bits already, and you're thinking, oh, well, I just need something when I'm up on the hill, maybe as a little backup, we have these in stock now. So it's the TYT UV88, dual band, two and 70, five watts. Really nice construction on these as well. So they're kind of like, uh, based on the 380 kind of chassis, but a little bit slimmer. And these are 49.99. So use your voucher. 25 pounds gets you a dual band handy. Good thing with these as well. Comes with the programming cable. And also the desktop drop-in charger. So I'll run through that again, just in case. <laughs> Order the 705 with the backpack and we'll be supplying you with a 25 pounds gift voucher and that'll be open over this weekend only so uh, i believe there's something for the weekend's going to be going out on friday around about lunchtime you know we're fairly flexible you can call from then that's not a problem uh, we can ship out if you call before two o'clock we can get out for saturday delivery uk mainland as well okay well thanks for watching the guys have got some great videos for you coming up and hopefully we'll catch you next week take care hi how is everyone? Uh, this is Mark, uh, G1DX. I'm at ML, MLNS today and uh, hope you're all keeping well. I just thought it might be useful today for us to revisit the venerable Kenwood TS590SG, the latest variant in a long line of superb superhet radios. Um, a lot of the modern hams, or newly qualified hams, maybe overlook these radios. It, there's some they're, they're the favourite radios of visually impaired because of their buttons, but also some folks like operating these radios because they do have buttons and they don't want to use touch screens. Um, however, it does uh, lack one modern feature that uh, the, the new radios have, and that is a, a band scope display. Um, however, it is remarkably easy to get this radio bang up to date with a band scope, just like all the other SDR radios, but in addition you benefit from buttons and the classic sound of a Superhet receiver. All you need, believe it or not, is a cable, which we have here, um, and one of the excellent uh, SDR devices from SDR Play can be the DX, the Uno or the straightforward RSP1A.
beautiful little de simple devices. To get it to work and to deliver, uh, a, which we'll show you in a minute, to deliver a, the band scope display, all you need to do to enable the feature, the port we will be using, I'll give you just a brief look, it's at the back of the radio and it's the, and it's the drive port that we'll be using with a phono plug. So a uh, RCA phono plug into the drive port, that particular one. Turn the radio around and to enable it so we can use again the, the SDR receiver we go into the menu, we select feature 85 using the multi knob so turn it around till you get to 85 and using the up and down arrow keys select it, it will default on drive you want to select antenna and that enables uh, the drive port then effectively to have a sample of the IF receive output that we can feed into our SDR. And I just want to re-emphasize it does need to be the SG. If you've got an earlier variant it will need some other um, other equipment like for instance the MFJ 1708B SDR. But with this one all you need is a cable and to enable that. And one of these devices and of course a PC, a Windows PC preferably. So now I'll just show you, um, we've set this up um, with OmniRig which is a piece of uh, um, software uh, which gives you the addition of slaving the frequency on both the computer or the radio to each other so effectively you ch turn this in to a full SDR tuning using a screen or using your VFO button on your, free, uh, on your radio. So we're just going to go over now and look at what it looks like on the actual computer. So what we're going to do now is just have a quick look to see how this would work for you maybe in your shack. So we've got the TS590 SG, we have a PC screen running Windows 10 using an SDR Play RSB1 here we see our lovely familiar uh, band scope. We have the band scope with all the traces of SSB, which is terrific. We've got reception through the radio, which we can tune using the mouse. So, for instance, here or here. And we will notice that the radio and the computer are both synced together. And the other nice thing, of course, even though we've got this just in pan adapter mode at the moment, we could listen through the computer as well. So we have, we have two real receivers here. So we can either use it as the one, one frequency or we can use it um, as two receivers. Uh, but today we're using this purely in a pan adapter mode, TS590SG with a PC, SDR RSB1A. We can either tune using our mouse um, and clicking around, such as this. I'll just turn on. Which is so we've got all the all the advantages of of an SDR, or we can use the VFO button on the. TS590 and as you will see up here it's actually altering the frequency display and the tune of the radio and indeed our trace. So there you have it in a nutshell revisit the Kenwood TS590 SG you get the fantastic filtering and classic sound of the state-of-the-art um, um, superhet receiver transceiver along with a band scope. What else do you want? Have a good day and happy, happy hamming. Take care. Hello everyone, I'm Steve, Steve Venner, uh, G0TN, and I'm the workshop manager here at Martin Lynch and Sons. Um, what I'm going to try and show you today is how to fit uh, a new style M&P Evo PL259 to a piece of coax. And so I thought we'd show you um, 
basically what the differences are very quickly and the new Evo plugs are actually a little bit easier to fit than the older style plugs. So that's what I'm going to try and show you how to do today. Uh, so first what I'm going to show you is what, one of the issues that uh, causes a bit of grief for our customers is when, certainly when you're fitting the plugs to say the Ultraflex 10 uh, cables is that it's very important that you use the right tool for trimming the ends and things like that. In the um, downstairs in the sales room we actually have a proper pair of uh, cable cutters and they actually have um, a circular edge to them. We've had some people where they've been using ordinary wire cutters such as this and it does tend to flay over the ends of the inner core of the conductor. It makes it very difficult to get that center, center pin on. So always try and use the right tool for the right jobs, uh, job. The guys downstairs, if you have, uh, want to buy some of these pliers, I wouldn't recommend these because they're quite expensive. Unless you're going to do a lot of cables, it's not really necessary. Um, but we do do um, the proper um, amateur cable cutters for, for your use. So I say just speak to the sales guys and they'll help you out. Right, so that's, that's the first bit. So let's have a quick look at what the differences are between the old style plug and the new style. So here's some old ones. I think it's the last two in existence. Right, so that's the old one. And here is the new one. Apart from the length being slightly different, what you'll notice is that if I show you here, on the old style, the center pin was actually hollow and you had to pass the inner conductor up, up the, to the end of that and then put a huge amount of solder down, down the end. On the new ones, they're all solid uh, conductor and it's only a short piece of conductor that you need to trim off. So that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to put that to one side for a minute, put that to one side. I so say they are slightly um, different lengths, as you can see there, but hey-ho. Right, so as with all of them, we start off, we take the old plug apart. So we start off with the back nut, then if we're lucky, we should be able to get the center pin out. There we go. So you start off the back nut, the thrust washer, as I like to call it, uh, the silicon seal, the T-hat, and then we have this uh, center pin here, which comes up with that support piece of nylon on it. So that's, that's all you get, that's all you need. So the first thing that we're going to do, as I tend not to measure, th measure things, I tend to offer things up, is what we want to do is get the center part of the inner conductor the same length as this part here. You can see there's a little hole in one side. So the whole length of that is where we're going to trim the outer sheath of the cable. Normally it'd be about that long. So what we're going to do now is very carefully, uh, actually what I'm going to do is put my glasses on, sorry about this, um, so I can actually see what I'm doing and I don't want any blood everywhere. So here we go. When you're cutting this you don't have to cut right down inside of the sheath. You just put a score around the edge and then if you again score down there you should be able to simply peel off the outer sheath. Oops, there goes that, don't worry about that. Um, one thing very important that I didn't say, or didn't say, um, always remember to put the back nut on first, followed by the thrust washer, uh, followed by the rubber seal. Right, it's, it's very uh, embarrassing when you do that and you've got 100 meters of cable and you forget to put those bits on first. So it's, uh, yeah, so do, don't forget. We all do it, don't worry. So once we've got that, what you then want to do is tease out carefully all the outer braid so that it sticks straight out from the center conductor. Don't try and ball it up or anything like that. Okay, so we've got that. Then it's a simple matter of pushing that over the top. If I show you that, we should be able to just slide that down inside. Once you've done that, then the next stage is to get a pair of nice sharp wire cutters and we just trim off the excess cable from there. Go on, go on, go on. So that should do nicely. Right, so we've done that. Then we can push the rubber grommet up so that it fits up, comes right up to the T-hat. If I can get my hands out of the way, you should be able to see that. 
And some people have asked why we put this washer on here. Uh, if you don't have that on, when you try and tighten up the nut at the end, the nut binds onto the silicon. It makes it very, very difficult, very, very difficult to turn. So you put that on there and now that will spin freely and tighten up quite nicely. OK, so we've done that. Next stage is to trim, excuse me a second, my knife, trim the inner screen all the way down. And then if you're lucky, let's get that out of the way, we should be able to cut both sides of that. And then we just pull that off a little bit and there we have it. Okay, that's good. Okay, now we've got um, a little bit of copper braid um, sheath coming over there. We want to make sure there's no copper, either the sheath or the braid, touching the centre core, because that would be bad, It'd be very bad. You wouldn't like that at all. So, now we, we do have a little bit of a problem here. I've been a bit over-enthusiastic with my um, measuring here, where I've been pushing stuff. So what happens now is that should very loosely fit over the end, but you can see it's probably about five millimetres too long. So what we need to do is trim that off by about five millimetres. I'm going to use the same cable shears that they use downstairs. And if you use ordinary wire cutters, you will find that this bit splays out. Okay, and it make this bit difficult to fit on. So let's see how that goes. And that should fit pretty much right down to the end there. That's not bad at all. So the next step, okay, if I get this to lay properly, what we're going to do is grab some solder. Here's a soldering iron I switched on earlier, hopefully. And we're going to just fill that up with, flood that with solder. Once it takes a little while for the heat to get through. And then you'll find at one point the solder will actually sit, uh, start wicking straight down that hole. Any second now. A little bit more just to give it a little bit of uh, oomph. There, good. So that's done. Let it cool for a bit, otherwise you might burn fingers. That's not good practice either. So, there we go. Okay, what we can do is a pair of pliers up here just to make sure it's on nice and tight. And then what we do is we just put that, if I can do that, we just slide it up the middle. And you should see the pin come out there almost just out sticking so it's sticking out the top. Once you've done that just tighten up the back nut and I normally use uh, obviously a pair of spanners on that but I think you get the idea just tighten up nicely so the o-ring makes a nice seal around the back end here and that with the seal inside with the seal at the end that gives you a nice waterproof uh, connection or water resistant I should say water resistant connection and that's all there is to it at least for that end. So I put one on the other end just so you can see and then uh, I'll show you what we do finally. So here's the last one. Right. So I've just fitted the second one as you've seen. Uh, one thing I missed off on the first one because um, I, I thought it was missing from the package. There's a little um, white washer that goes over the centre cable first. Um, if you look at the um, when I fit the second one you should see, see how it's fitted correctly. So Sorry about that. Um, one final thing, once you've made your length of cable, um, what you really need to do next is to make sure it's uh, all okay, at least DC wise. And we do that just with a simple uh, ohm meter, a little beeper. So we put these together. Yep, check the outside to outside, outside to inside, nothing, and make sure it's continuous across there, which it is. So that is all good. So there you have it, grapple fans. Thank you very much for watching. Hi, I'm Gary, Technical Support Manager here at Martin Lynch & Sons and I've been asked to show you some of the SDR transceivers and receivers that we have available and just to point out that they're not as expensive as you might think. For instance, this one is actually the ELAD. Um, this one is actually under a thousand pounds and it will get you up and running with an SDR radio which is standalone and connects to a computer. Um, these are lovely little QRP radios with a 5 watt output. It's a great starter radio and really, really good little general receiver and transceiver. 
Um, the next one, of course, to point out, which we uh, we did last week, we, we when we spoke to the guys at Expert in uh, Russia, were is well is basically the little SDR um, transceiver, which is 20 watts, and this one is actually under 1,500 pounds, and we'll get you uh, superb software. And now with the new sort of software that's actually coming out in the very near future, we'll get you access to all of those sort of facilities and um, all the advances in, in that also. But that's only 20 watts. You could, if you want to in the future, you can add that to maybe an amplifier and, and get what you need out of it. But these are great starting points for a transceiver, um, especially with, with the true SDR that's based on a computer. These work with Mac, Linux, and on the Windows platform. And of course, that one's under 1500. The big brother here, which is the uh, 100 watt uh, DX, again, same software package as the, um, the Pro 2, but this one's actually 100 watts with some advances on the connectivity on the back there, plus the inbuilt fan, obviously, with the extra 100, you know, the extra 80 watts, it needs a little bit of extra cooling. But again, this is under £2,000 and is a great start into uh, SDR transceivers. Um, really, really good. I love these because you can, one, you can remote, uh, remote into them. Secondly, they're quite small. You can put them out of the way. They will go into, say, a network cabinet or something like that, and you don't have to sort of see them on your desk. Everything can be done from, again, from a Mac, MacBook, Linux, from Windows, just about anything. So there you go. They're the three sort of, I think, under £2,000 starter entry point SDR transceivers. Fabulous. Now, I think Mark's already mentioned the, <coughs> the um, SDR plays. Now, that is the RSP1. And again, this is under £100. And that will get you into the world of SDR receivers for next to nothing. It's just a fabulous, fabulous uh, value product. Now, next to that, again, I think this is under £150. This is the very popular uh, FunCube dongle. Um, this is uh, Howard Long, I think it is, that uh, has been doing these for as long as I can remember in, in uh, my ham radio career. Um, and again, these are fabulous, very, very popular with, with students and uh, universities because of its size. Um, they're very portable little unit, fabulous. Then we move up a little bit. Again, this is a, um, the SDR Play uh, RSP DX. This has got um, some improvements on uh, receive, especially into the medium wave bands. Great general receiver, um, very, very popular with, with uh, shortwave listeners. Um, it's just a fabulous value. Again, this is, I think this, one, this one's under, under 200 pounds for, for that, which is great value when you consider what you get with that. But also you get the, the Duo, which is, I think is about uh, is under 300 pounds. This is a, a dual receiver um, module. It's it's basically a uh, it's got two individual receivers in there, and it's really really good. And there are some advances coming with the uh, SDR Uno software, which mean that you maybe in the future, if they can, they're actually working on some hardware now to actually make it so that uh, this can actually be used for direction finding and lots of other things so again this is a fabulous uh, uh, piece of kit now one of the other things that you can use along with all of these sort of things we sell these contour uh, shuttle wheels which basically you can use as a rotary vfo um, sort of knob again this is um, i use one of these all the time and i actually use it with video editing and all sorts of things it's actually like a very versatile mouse but in the center of it and you can see there um, there's actually a little wheel with a little thumb hole in it that you can actually use as a, a VFO. So again, that's great. That's under, I think that's under £40, that. So there you go. So that's a bit of a sum up of uh, some of the SDR kit that we have here at hamradio.co.uk or Martin Lynch & Sons. Good afternoon. Welcome to Martin Lynch & Sons. I'm John, 20EZK. Today we're going to speak about the Enitone 778 UV, which is a 200 channel, 5, 15 and 25 watt mobile radio. Uh, we can extend the coverage to transmit outside the amateur radio bands for a small charge of six pounds. The radio itself is very solid. You get a DTMF microphone. On the next section of the video, I'll do a close up with a brief summary of some of the functions. 
in the box you obviously get the mobile mounting bracket, the DC power cable, you get a free programming cable and the software is free from our website to download. Obviously the, the screws for the mobile bracket and a detailed manual. And I know we're all guilty of it. I do suggest you read the manual to get a better understanding of the radio. So the next shot you will see is me doing a brief summary of some of the functions on the front of the display. Welcome back. As discussed, I'm going to go through briefly some of the menu options. You've got these buttons down the side, P1, P2, P3, P4, P5, P6, which can be programmed on the software. And you've got a function button. So you've got six selections here. You press the function button. You've got another six displayed as well. So if we go back to the original setting. So if I can say the squelch, click on squelch, it's set at one at the moment. If I rotate this, the squelch is off. Then if I go to the volume, I can load the volume. Now it doesn't load the bleep, but that can be disabled in the software. So I wouldn't worry about that too much. And obviously you've got A and B for selection, you've got VMM, you've got monitor. Now, obviously the monitor function won't operate there because the squelch is innate, uh, disabled at the moment. But if I go back to squelch and put it back to one and then press the monitor button, so, down there, sorry, you can get the monitor. So you don't have to have the squelch set to zero to hear what's going on. That can be duplicated on the um, keypad as well. You've got the PA, PB, PC, and PD. You've got main A and B, so you can press on there as well. And it's a full DTMF keyboard on the microphone, so you can do direct entry of the frequencies, select menu channels. Very easy to navigate, um, very clear display. Um, I do like the fact that you can see the voltage at the bottom, read out, showing the supply, uh, power supply or your car battery. I generally run my radio off a secondary battery, so it's a good idea to always be able to see the voltage um, being displayed live. It's a very sturdy radio, it's got a nice heat sink, it's got an SO239 uh, at the back, you've also got a socket at the back for a speaker, um, so which I always find is helpful in the car, this is below the seat or further away from you to be able to receive. Simple on and off button, and when you do depower the radio closing, and you turn it on it says welcome like some of the dmr radios and other radios you can actually uh, edit that welcome message and put your own call sign so it's very very intuitive the software is very simple to use i would suggest reiterating having a look at the manual the software is free to download from my website you get the free program and lead and for under 100 pounds it's a great radio to put in a backpack having it in your car as a backup or your main unit uh, when you're on 2 and 70. Thank you. That was a, uh, an overview of the Enitone 778 UV. If you've got any further questions or inquiries, please contact the store uh, when it's convenient or email us and we will reply to your email as soon as possible. Thank you. Okay, before you go, thank you for watching and thanks to all the guys as well for all their clips during this week's something for the weekend. Uh, just to let you know as well, 101 MPs and 101Ds are back in stock now. I know Michael was asking about that last week. So yes, they're back in stock now, Michael, if you want to place your order. Uh, I'll be in the store on Saturday, not a problem. And if anyone else wants one, you know where we are, give us a quick call. All of the items you've seen today are in stock. Um, with regards to the TS590s, there is limited stock, so please be quick. Do have a couple of used ones available as well. I may do a live uh, video shoot this coming Saturday as well with the used equipment. So John's been putting the used equipment online. Uh, we'll see how it goes because I know you, you, you're quick when it comes to the website <laughs> and uh, everyone orders very quickly for the used equipment. So if there's anything left or we get any new items in, I'll do a live link on Saturday via YouTube. So please log in for that and we'll do some special offers as well. Uh, Martin will be back as well from the Isle of Wight. So welcome back, Governor. We'll see you soon. Maybe, maybe you pop in on Saturday, you never know. Uh, and Jonathan as well will be back with us for the used equipment next week. He's had a lovely break in Yorkshire. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed yourself, Jonathan. And to all of you out there, thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.